Welcome to the next part of chemistry chapter 2 is matter around the sphere. In this part we are going to study about saturated and unsaturated solutions. So we understood in detail that what is the meaning of solution in the previous video. How a solution is made. What is the concentration of a solution. How to find it out. What is the difference between concentrated and dilute solution? What are the properties of solution? What are the different examples of solutions? So all those things were discussed in detail in the last video. In this video, we are going to talk about saturated and unsaturated solutions. So you might find it uh, familiarity in these words saturated and unsaturated solutions but our idea is to understand the exact meaning of what do they mean of, of these words okay now just imagine that you add one spoon of sugar in 200 ml of water which is kept in a beaker at 25 degrees celsius if you stir the sugar it dissolves and disappears and now add one more spoon of sugar to this solution that also dissolves in this way you can go on dissolving different amounts of the same solute that is sugar more and more sugar you can go on dissolving okay so what will happen is you are constantly increasing the concentration of this solution concentration of sugar in this solution is constantly increased by you because you are going on adding more and more and more and more solute that is sugar in the beaker so a particular solution may contain a less amount of dissolved solute whereas another solution may contain a large amount of the solute okay Depending upon the amount of solute present, solutions can also be classified as unsaturated and saturated solution. Now, this scenario which we are talking about is very much similar to concentrated and dilute solution. If the, the amount of solvent is more, let me write here, if the amount of solute I'm sorry is more then the solution is said to be concentrated and if the amount of solute solute is less and the amount of solvent is more then the solution is said to be dilute so very similar to this concept but two new terms unsaturated and saturated solution so what exactly is the difference between a saturated solution and a concentrated solution the difference is very very small okay let's see first we'll understand an activity which will demonstrate how a saturated or an or an unsaturated solution can be examined to do this activity you need 50 ml of water in two beakers a and b you have to add common salt in beaker a and sugar or barium chloride any other soluble substance in beaker b slowly with con continuous stirring on stirring the salt dissolves or salt and sugar both dissolves go on adding more and more salt and sugar in respective beakers with constant stirring keep a close watch at the bottom of the beaker now this is the most important part which is never the case with uh, checking the concentration of a solution okay this happens when you are checking whether the solution is saturated or unsaturated what you do is you go on measuring and adding different quantities of solute more and more quantities of solute in a given solution and you keep and you keep on stirring it 
stirring the solution so that the solute which you are adding continuously go on dissolving but you need they, they have asked you to keep a close watch at the bottom of the beaker to see whether the solute is getting dissolved or not that means there are chances there are chances that after a point of time if you go on adding solute to a given solution a point will come where no more of the solute will dissolve in the given quantity of the solution मतलब एक लिमिट आ जाएगी उसके बाद तुम एक छोटा सा दाना भी अगर शुगर का डालोगे या एक यू कैन से पिंच ऑफ सॉल्ट भी अगर डालोगे तो वो भी डिजोल्व नहीं होगा तो अब क्या हुआ व्हाट हैपेंड एक्चुअली द थिंग व्हिच हैज हैपेंड इज यू हैव मेड दिस सॉल्यूशन सैचुरेटेड actually if you see the word saturated closely this word saturated means if you see its dictionary meaning it it uh, it tells you I'll, i'll i'll show you the dictionary meaning because i'll uh, if, if i uh, give you the meaning i will give you the uh, you know common uh, meaning of this term let's see the dis, uh, dictionary meaning see cause something to become thoroughly soaked with water or other liquid so that no more can be absorbed to fill something with to fill something or someone with something until no more can be hold or absorbed means yeah so they are also using some common terms uh, saturated means to fill something until there is no more space to fill something until there is no more space and what does this mean and just imagine just imagine that you have a container a beaker or something like that and you have water in it just look at the uh, small part of this uh, water which is present in the beaker in which i have dissolved the maximum amount of solute sugar or salt or whatever so what happens is there are water molecules okay matter is made up of molecules and the matter of liquids have spaces between them and in these spaces the particles of sh- sugar or salt they have taken the places in these spaces the particles of sugar or salt have settled now you see all the all the space which was there is taken by you see the square particles now if you see if you see this closely okay you can see that you can see that there are circular particles and there are square particles then there is circular particle then there is square particle and then there is circular particle and then there is square particle circular square what do you mean by circular particle this is a water molecule just imagine okay water molecule and what is this square particle this is the solute it can it could be a particle of uh, sugar or salt so what what do you see when you go on adding salt or sugar 
in a given sample of water this salt or sugar particles they break down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller particles as we know in a solution the size of particles is around uh, a nanometer right that is 10 raised to minus 9 meter very small so this the, these salt particles are initially visible if you take it in your hand you can see sm small salt particles but if you put it in water and stir it will get broken into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller particles and they will get settled between the spaces which are there between the particles of water but till when because there is not infinite spaces between the particles of water there is limited space so what happens is if you go on adding salt to a beaker of water if you make it saturated if you fill the spaces between the particles of water until there is no more space left until there is no uh, scope of adding more salt what will happen all the spaces between the particles of water molecules between the water molecules will be filled will be filled by the solute small solute particles so small solute particles will take the spaces will take up the spaces which are present between the water molecules and and if you add more salt or more so solute any kind of solute to this kind of saturated solution it will not be dissolved so what will happen if the solution becomes saturated just imagine that this solution has now become saturated okay you have added the maximum possible amount of a solute in this solution so what will happen if you add more if you add more solute it will and if you stir it it will not get dissolved no matter how much you stir it what will happen it will get settled down you understand so that's why they are saying that's why they are saying that keep a close watch at the bottom of the beaker to see whether the solute is getting dissolved or not note the stage when no more solute dissolves now heat the contents of the beaker and raise the temperature by 10 degrees celsius now this is something very very important that is point number five see we have understood point number one two three four we took water we started adding solute to this water and continuously stirring and we kept a close watch at the bottom of the beakers and we uh, we, we found a point where no more solute could be dissolved and we uh, noted the amount of solute which was dissolved in the given quantity of water now of course we had two containers two beakers and we added two different solutes in the water present in the two separate beakers okay so we will notice few interesting things one of the interesting thing is in both the beakers since we are adding to the same quantity of water we are adding different solutes both the uh, containers uh, which are having same amount of water will allow different amount of solutes to get dissolved in them when we uh, go on adding the solutes in them okay so suppose if you are talking about salt salt will allow around uh, let's say 35 grams of salt will be allowed uh, by water to get dissolved in it uh, at uh, let's say the room temperature 30 degrees celsius 25 degrees celsius but if it is sugar then sugar's solubility is very high so sugar uh, on the other hand will be like let's say around 100 120 grams of sugar will be dissolved in the same amount of uh, water at the same temperature so for different substances the solubility is also different that is the first thing we notice yeah but a stage comes in both the cases where no more solute can be dissolved in both the cases so now both the solutions have become saturated both the solutions have become saturated saturated means they are filled with something with solute until there is no more space left until no more of solute can be dissolved so that is saturated solution 
so now can you tell me the difference between saturated solution and a concentrated solution see concentration concentrated solution simply means that the amount of solvent is less it does not say that uh, you know in a given solution uh, no more uh, solute can be dissolved it does not say about anything about solute it just tells you if the amount of solute sorry if the amount of solvent is relatively less then the solution is concentrated if the amount of uh, solvent is relatively high then the solution is dilute theek hai jaise ki agar maine ek beaker liya and i put one uh, in in that in, uh, in that water i put i take some water in the, in that water if i put one uh, uh, spoon of uh, sugar right then it is Uh, dilute but if i put five spoons of sugar then it is concentrated okay so it does not say about saturation saturation is the limit is the limit up to which you can dissolve you can go on dissolving the solute in it so saturated solution is a solution in which no more of solute can be dissolved unsaturated solution on the other hand is a solution in which more solute can be dissolved at a given temperature in the given amount okay now they are doing one interesting thing as i told you in point number 5 they are heating the contents of the beaker after making it saturated they are heating the contents of beaker and raising the temperature by 10 degree celsius what does this mean if you have a saturated solution and if you are heating the contents of the beaker by 10 degree celsius what will happen you know on heating what happens let's go deeper into the process of heating as well on heating any substance expands suppose you have uh you have the same beaker in, and i will i will heat it the same beaker what will happen to the spaces between the molecules now now the spaces between the molecules will be greater because the water will expand it will occupy more volume now okay the water uh, the spaces between the see if the level of water is here if the level of water is over here okay it will increase after heating and it will go up to here why because on heating everything expands so volume of water will increase if the volume of water will increase on heating what will happen the spaces between the molecules of water will further increase now if you see if you compare it with the earlier uh, picture which i made now there are spaces Uh, uh there are molecules also in the spaces but now spaces have increased because the water has expanded on heating so what will happen this undissolved particles which i showed you which were present because since the solution became saturated no more of solute could be dissolved in it on heating since more space is created these undissolved particle will also get dissolved and you will see that these particles will disappear on heating so what what did you do you actually first made the solution saturated then you heated it by 10 degree celsius so that the solution expanded more space were created and the undissolved particle which you added at the last at the end after making it saturated those particles also got dissolved those solute particles also got fit into the spaces which were created by heating now you can try start adding more solute in the warm water and you will observe that that also dissolves because in warm water since it has more volume more solute can be added okay so the questions which they are asking on the basis of this activity is what is your observation is the amount of solute that can be dissolved in water at a given temperature is same no it is absolutely different if to, there are two different solutes in the same amount of solvent 
in this at the same temperature different amounts of solutes will be dissolved at a given time what is the effect of forming the solution the sol solution again becomes unsaturated so that is the effect of warming so it is observed that a stage four a stage is reached uh, at which no more uh, solute dissolves. This means that at any particular temperature at this stage, a solution has dissolved as much solute as it is capable of dissolving. And then the solution is said to be saturated at that given temperature. So please write the definition of this. A solution in which no more solute can be dissolved at a given temperature is called a saturated solution. Thus, the saturated solution corresponds to the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved at a particular temperature. Note this down as well. Saturated solution corresponds to maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved at a particular temperature. The amount of solute that can be dissolved in a solution is different for salt and sugar or barium chloride. So the amount of salt which can be dissolved in a given volume of uh, Sol sol uh, solvent uh, or water, the amount of sugar which can be dissolved in the same volume of solvent, the amount of barium chloride which can be dissolved in the same uh, volume of the solvent are all different. Because different solute will have different solubility. And since they have different solubility, different amounts of these solutes will be dissolved in the same quantity of solvent. On the other hand, a solution in which the amount of solute is less than the saturation level is called unsaturated solution. In other words, an unsaturated solution, in an unsaturated solution, more quantity of solute can be dissolved at a given temperature. Sometimes a solution may contain more amount of solute than the saturation concentration. Sometimes a solution may contain more amount of solute then the saturation concentration. If a solution contains more amount of solute than the saturation level, it is called super saturated solution, which we made after heating the water. So the water already contained the maximum amount of solute, but what we did was we did a trick. We started heating it. When we started heating it, the volume of the water increased, it expanded and more amount of solute which was not able to get dissolved uh, initially now got dissolved in it so we created a, uh, a solution which was already saturated we converted into super saturated solution we dissolved more amount of solute in it by heating it right so if we increased its saturation level and we call we call it a super saturated solution so we can see all you have to remember is these these uh, terminologies okay ye pura tumhe process samajh mein agar aaya hai to tumhe learn kya karna hai tumhe learn se itni cheez karni hai aur uske upar se tum answer apne hisab se frame kar sakte ho right saturated solution kya hota hai in saturated solution amount of solute equal to saturation level matlab maximum amount of solute has been dissolved unsaturated solution amount of solute less than the saturation level means more solute can be added and dissolved in a given solution it is unsaturated super saturated solution amount of solute more than saturation level means even after the uh, solution has become saturated we can manipulate it we can heat it we can create more space and we can create we can add more solute to it so the amount of solute is more than saturated uh, saturation level and such kind of solution is known as super saturated solution okay the next term which we have to study is solubility The amount of solute required to prepare saturated solution in a given quantity of solvent at a given temperature is called the solubility of the solute. So, solubility, solubility 
is directly uh, related to solute it is the property of solute that is the substance which has to be dissolved in a solvent substance which is in lesser quantity than solvent so solute has this characteristic property of solubility okay the exact definition of solubility of a solute is the amount of solute which can be dissolved in 100 grams of a solvent at a given temperature is called its solubility whose solubility its who is this its solutes solubility so solubility directly relates with the solute for example i told you that in 100 grams of water 35 not no more than 35 grams of common salt sodium chloride can be dissolved so the solubility of uh, common salt sodium chloride in 100 grams of water is 35 grams but in 100 grams of water around 200 grams of sugar can be dissolved just imagine water is 100 grams but sugar is 200 grams which can be dissolved in 100 grams of water so solubility of sugar is 200 grams in 100 grams of water sugar has the highest solubility so like that different different uh, soluble substances have different different solubilities see they have given examples over here you can note it down different substances have different solubility in water for example solubility of sodium chloride is 36 gram at 20 degree celsius in 100 grams of water and that of copper sulfate is 21 grams at 20 degrees Celsius. This means that we can dissolve a maximum of 36 gram of NaCl in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. But we can dissolve only 21 grams of copper sulfate in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? So solubility is always mentioned in grams of solute, quantity of solute or mass of solute in grams. At a given uh, temperature of water or uh, uh, solvent and for a given mass of solvent that is 100 grams always okay the solubility of solids in liquids generally increases with rise in temperature except in few cases and decreases with decrease in temperature so we saw that uh, you know when we were adding salt to a container of water and when we increase the temperature of that container, more amount of solute could be dissolved. That means solubility of a solid increases with rise in temperature, but there are exceptions. For example, solubility of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate increases with increase in temperature. See, at 10 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water, 35 grams of potassium chloride can be dissolved and 21 gram of potassium nitrate can be dissolved now as the temperature goes on increases goes on increasing the amount of uh, solute that is potassium chloride and potassium nitrate which can be dissolved in a given solu uh, solution also increases right so solubility you can say increases let's do some salt examples 21 grams of sodium chloride dissolves in 60 grams of water at 20 degrees celsius to form saturated solution what is the solubility of sodium chloride at 20 degrees celsius okay we can use unitary method over here see we know that 21 grams of solute can be dissolved in can be dissolved in 60 grams of solvent that is water at a given temperature that is 20 degrees celsius so how many grams of solute can be dissolved in 100 grams of water that's what we need to find you know unitary method right yeah so what we do now 100 multiplied by 21 divided by 60 3, 2, 3, 7, 2, 5. So the answer is 35 grams. So 35 grams of sodium chloride can be dissolved in, please note it down, 100 grams 
of water at 20 degree celsius therefore solubility of sodium chloride is 35 grams that's it this is the answer let's check 35 grams understood unitary method simple unitary method will work over here. next question what mass of potassium nitrate would be needed to form a saturated solution in 250 grams of water at 293 kelvin give thus give that this given that the solubility of salt is 32 grams per 100 gram as at this temperature now first of all there is no use of temperature in the calculations okay so don't worry about it because the temperature is the same at which we have to find the amount of potassium nitrate that could be dissolved in 250 grams of water so what would we do is we'll do uh, unitary method so solubility is given solubility of potassium nitrate is equal to 32 grams that means that means 32 grams of potassium nitrate can be dissolved can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 293 kelvin now you must know what is 293 kelvin right if you want to convert 293 kelvin into degree celsius subtract 273 from it so it becomes 20 degree celsius but no need to do all that we don't have to do anything to the temperature in the questions of solubility okay so they are asking that what mass of potassium nitrate would be needed to form a saturated solution in 250 grams of water see if we add 32 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water it will become saturated that is because that is the maximum amount of uh, the potassium nitrate which can be added to 100 grams of water so it will 32 grams of potassium nitrate will make a saturated solution in 100 grams of water okay so how many grams of potassium nitrate will make a saturated solution in 250 grams of water unitary method so let's say 32 grams of solute in 100 grams of solvent right 32 grams of solute and 100 gram of solvent will make a saturated solution so how many grams of solute will make a saturated solution in 250 grams of water that is 250 multiplied by 32 upon 100 right so 5 twos are 5 fives are and 2 16s are 16 fives are 80 grams so the answer is 80 grams sorry for that oops 80 grams of potassium nitrate will make a saturated solution in 250 grams of water in 250 grams of water let's check the answer yes the answer is correct okay let's move to the next topic suspension what is a suspension suspension so first we started studying about solution the next important term is a suspension and then the colloid solution suspension colloid we have to understand all these three terms and compare them suspension is a heterogeneous mixture the first point of difference is ready 
solution was a homogeneous mixture suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which the solute particles do not dissolve but remain suspended throughout the bulk of the solvent suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which the solute particles do not dissolve but remain suspended throughout the bulk of the solvent therefore the suspensions contain small insoluble particles of the solute spread throughout the solvent the common examples of suspension is muddy water which is a suspension of soil particles in water have you seen a muddy water how does it look completely uh, you can say unclear where you can see the particles suspended in water some other examples are chalk water paints smoke in air these are all suspensions sparingly soluble salts what do you mean by sparingly sparingly means hardly the salts which are hardly soluble in salt uh, in water such as barium sulfate dispersed in water is also an example of a suspension remember all these exam examples of suspensions and note them down the particles particle size of solute particles is greater than 10 raised to minus 7 meter or 10 raised to minus 5 cm or 100 nanometer where the particle size of a uh, solution were around 1 nanometer less than 1 nanometer here the particle size are around 100 nanometer so 100 times greater than the size of the particles of solution are the particles of suspensions these particles may or may not be visible to naked eye but are visible under microscope so that's another point of difference the particles which are dissolved in a solution the solute particles dissolved in a solution are not visible even with the most powerful microscope but the particles which are dissolved in suspension may or may not be visible with naked eye but are definitely visible under microscope because of their large sizes properties of suspensions the main properties of suspensions are suspension is a heterogeneous mixture the particles of suspensions are bigger than 10 raised to minus 7 meter or 100 nanometer or 10 raised to minus 5 cm in diameter the particles of suspensions can be easily seen they may or may not be visible by naked eye but they are visible under microscope the particles of suspension scatter a beam of light passing through it and make it make its path visible the particles of suspension settle down when left undisturbed all the properties which you are seeing are exactly opposite to the properties of solution therefore suspension is unstable the suspension can be separated from the mixture by the process of filtration exactly opposite of solution right very easy properties exactly opposite properties of solution and this are the properties of suspensions then comes colloidal solution a colloidal solution is a solution in which the size of solute particles is intermediate between those in true solutions and suspensions so the size of particles are smaller than 100 nanometer and greater than 1 nanometer in between 100 nanometer and 1 nanometer or 10 raised to minus 7 meter and 10 raised to minus 9 meter in between that right the examples of colloidal solutions are milk gum solution blood milk cream now you must be thinking milk cream is not even uh, liquid yeah but it's not necessary that colloidal solutions are always liquid they can be like jelly like also ink soap solution these are all colloidal solutions the mixtures obtained by the groups e and f uh, of the activity which was done earlier are colloids anyway due to relatively small size of particles as compared to the suspension the mixture appears to be homogeneous 
colloidal mixtures appears to be homogeneous but actually colloidal solution is a heterogeneous mixture it consists of two phases dispersed phase and dispersion medium remember that what is dispersed phase it is the component which is present in small proportion basically solute and consists of particles of colloidal dimension that is between 10 raised to minus 9 meter to 10 raised to minus 7 meter dispersion medium it is the component which is present in excess and acts as a medium in which colloidal particles are dispersed. For example, in a colloidal solution of sulfur in water, sulfur particles constitute dispersed phase and water acts as a medium of dispersion. It may be noted that dispersed phase is like solute and dispersion medium is like a solvent in a solution. So in colloid, we don't call it solu solute and solvent. In colloid, colloidal solution, we call it dispersed phase and dispersion medium. Remember that. Thus, the particles of dispersed phase are distributed in dispersion medium. The two phase, dispersed phase and dispersion medium may be solid, liquid or gas. Depending on the physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium, different types of colloidal solutions are possible. So, if the dispersion medium is gas and dispersed phase is liquid, so that is, if liquid particles are dispersed in gas, the type of colloidal solution is called aerosol and the examples of aerosol type of colloidal solution in which a liquid phase is dispersed in gas medium are mist, fog and cloud. Water vapors are the dispersed phase which are dispersed in gas that's an aerosol when solid dispersed phase are uh, dispersed in liquid dispersion medium it is also known as aerosol and the examples are smoke dust storm automobile exhaust etc when gas is dispersed in liquid it is known as foam the type of colloidal solution is a foam. For example, shaving cream, soda water. Gas is dispersed in liquid. When liquid is dispersed in liquid, when dispersed medium and dispersion medium, dispersed phase and dispersion medium both are liquids. It is known as the type of colloidal solution is known as emulsion. Milk, medicine, face cream, these are all emulsions. Emulsions. When solid is dispersed in liquid dispersion medium, it is known as sol. For example, paints, mud, gold, sol. When gas is dispersed in solid, gas inside solid, remember, it is known as foam. Pumice stone, you know pumice stone? It's a very light weighted stone which is used to rub the, the, the bottom part of your... Uh, your your heels to remove the dead skin skin you know just to do this pedicure basically yeah pumice stone very light stone with holes in it foam rubber that's also a type of foam sponge is a type of foam when liquid dispersed phase is dispersed in solid dispersion medium it is known as a gel liquid and solid jelly cheese butter curd these are all types of gel colloidal solution then there is solid dispersed phase dispersed in solid dispersion medium solid soul for example alloys gemstones you know gemstone ruby sapphire uh, these are different uh, there are there are different ones ruby sapphire then uh, which is the uh, blue one? I, I forgot. Anyways, the gemstones. Milk. Again, milk was part of emulsion also and solid soil also. And glass. These are all... I, I, I doubt about milk, but I don't know. Yeah, the examples are given to you. Okay, so this is the comparison between the three types of... Uh, uh, solutions 
ट्रू सोल्यूशन सस्पेंशन एंड कोलॉइड ठीक है दे आर क्लासिफाइड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स इन बिटवीन ट्रू सोल्यूशन एंड सस्पेंशन दे आर लाइज कोलॉइडल सोल्यूशन एंड यू कैन रिमेंबर द साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल there is one more uh, characteristic which is shown by colloidal solutions that is brownian movement we have studied about the brownian movement in the first chapter brownian movement movement is random zigzag motion of all the particles in all directions the zigzag motion of colloidal particles is visible in colloidal solution which is known as brownian movement and it is caused by the collision of colloidal particles with the molecules of the dispersion medium one more uh, characteristic of colloids is uh, very famous that is tyndall effect that also we have studied in the first chapter so when a strong beam of light is passed through a true solution it does not its path does not become visible however if the same beam of light is passed through colloidal solution placed in the same room the path of the light becomes visible when seen from a direction at right angles to that incident beam this effect can also be observed when a fine beam of light falls in a room through a small hole in a window have you seen that through a small hole in a dark room if light enters you see all the uh, uh, you know dust particles moving in a zigzag motion that is basically your brownian motion but you also see the path of light which is coming inside the room its path is visible and that means that uh, dust filled air inside the room is a colloid so this effect in which the path of the light is visible is known as tyndall effect and it was first studied by the uh, by scientist tyndall and that that's why the name so phenomenon phenomenon of scattering of light by colloidal particles as a result of which the path of beam becomes visible is called tyndall effect see in true solution the path is will not be visible beam of light will not be visible inside true solution but beam of light will be visible inside a colloidal solution that is the tyndall effect when a, when light from torch is directed on the solution of copper sulfate solution and mixture of water and milk it is observed that beam of light becomes visible in case of mixture of water and milk that proves that mixture of water and milk is a colloidal solution and mixture of copper sulfate and water is a true solution tyndall effect can also be observed when sunlight passes a dense forest you might have seen pictures and you might have also seen in real life when you are in a dense forest and when sunlight enters through the canopy of trees uh, its its path is visible because the forest contains fog which contains tiny tiny droplets of water which acts as a particles of colloid dispersed in air to understand the difference between true solution suspension and colloid we can perform one activity which was again performed earlier similar to this so uh i will i will not go through this activity because we have studied uh, in detail about what are the differences of solution suspensions and colloid and how we can differentiate between them so we differentiate on the basis of the visibility of path of light that is tyndall effect we differentiate on the basis of stability in solutions uh and colloids the particles do not settle down but in suspensions the particles settle down that is stability of the solution then uh filtration in so, uh, true solutions and colloids the particles cannot be separated by filtration but in uh, suspensions the particles can be separated by filtration so yeah these are the points of differences so properties of colloid colloids colloid is a heterogeneous mixture unlike a uh, true solution which is the only homogeneous mixture colloids and suspensions are heterogeneous it consists of dispersed phase and dispersion medium 
the size of particles of colloid is between 1 nanometer and 100 nanometer the particles of colloids are too small to be seen by naked eyes the particles of colloid are big enough to scatter a beam of light that means they produce tyndall effect a colloid is a quite stable substance its particles do not settle down when left undisturbed the particles of colloidal solution cannot be separated from mixture by the process of filtration however they can be separated by a special technique known as centrifugation let's sum up the comparison of true solution colloids and suspensions these are the points of differences on the basis of the nature particle size appearance filterability through filter paper settling of particles visibility and tyndall effect seven points of differences let's let's go through them quickly so true solutions are homogeneous colloids and suspensions are heterogeneous the size of particles which we have already discussed appearance of true solution is clear and transparent colloids are generally transparent well not always because milk is a colloid and it's not transparent suspension is always opaque true solutions can pass through filter paper colloids can pass through filter paper and suspensions can be separated by the process of filter filtration because they cannot pass through the particles cannot pass through filter paper the particles in true solutions do not settle the particles of colloid settle only on centrifugation so that's a very specific process centrifugation which we are going to study in the next video and the particles of suspension settle under gravity easily uh the particle the visibility in true solutions is not uh the the path of light is not visible when tyndall effect is observed it is not uh, the tyndall effect is basically not observed in true solutions the particle uh, the the path of light is visible only under oh wait 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 visibility means the visibility of particles particles are not visible in true solutions particles are visible in colloid but only under ultra microscope very strong microscope and particles are visible in suspensions with naked eye tyndall effect is not shown in true solution but in colloids and suspension tyndall effect is shown so these are the different types of solutions which we have studied okay so then there are these um, questions and answers which we will discuss in the live class we have to discuss the question and answers in the form of a quiz of the first part as well and then there is this exercise which i am going to give it to you so now only one part of this chapter is remaining that is separation of the constituents of a mixture that we are going to study different methods of separations in the third part and the chapter will be over okay so i hope you understood the whole video i will be seeing you very soon in the next video bye bye